Hey guys, this is Ron Moore, and I want to talk about Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Um, as of this recording, yesterday was Father's Day. I don't know when this video will be up, but yesterday was Father's Day. My dad passed away in November. So Castlevania II Simon's Quest is uh, will always have a special place in my heart, not because of nostalgia, the nostalgia of the game, me enjoying the game back in the day, but my dad bought it for my ninth birthday. And so if it wasn't for my dad, I would not have had the great memories I have with Simon's Quest. I might have discovered it eventually today as I grew up, but I would have not had the memories I have with the game if it wasn't for my dad buying it for me for my ninth birthday back in October 89. I probably would have heard about Simon's Quest eventually through AVGN and then uh might have played it after that and hopefully i would like to think i would enjoy it because castlevania 2 i mean yeah maybe in comparison to 1 and 3 i can definitely see why people do not like it it's a different formula from part one and they went with it with the, the formula they had in part two then they went back to the original formula in part three so that might have told you and even the graphics you know the, the graphics aren't as good in castlevania 3 but it is it isn't all about the graphics. So I think that goes to show you that Castlevania 2 probably wasn't as well received back in the day as the first Castlevania. However, with that being said, there was still a lot of great elements about it. Yeah, the boss battles was weak. The translation was terrible. Um but the soundtrack is awesome and it has a good it, it's a good adventure game. It really was a good adventure game. The clues were misleading. Some people think it's a conspiracy that they worked for Nintendo Power so that people can get the magazine to know what to do with the red crystal and the tornado. I don't know about that, but the, I discovered, a friend of mine had to tell me, and I think he found out through Nintendo Power maybe. But yeah, I remember that game was so cryptic, but there was something about it that made it fun and so replayable. Me and my friends had a lot of fun trying to figure things out. Throwing holy water on every block we see. Uh, kneeling down here and uh, talking to this person over there. And yeah, just, I mean, we had fun trying to figure things out. I remember figuring out how to get to Dracula on my own. Because if you remember, when you use the red crystal to kneel down in front of the wall. When the tornado takes you to the other side. I finally wondered one day, I said, what if I do that again, but try to go back? Will the wall that's there block me from going back? It'll just be a dead end and I can't go any further? Like a, a border, a barrier? Or will I, or can I actually go back? And what, what would be back there if I were to go back? So I used the tornado trick. It took me to that spot and I went back and I, whoa. A whole new world, a whole new area of the game I not discovered yet. That's when I found out how to eventually get to Dracula's castle. And I used to play that game so much that one of the passwords that I got that were there was the password. I guess it's randomly generated. I don't know how they do it. I don't know if it's one universal password, but the password where I have all the items and I'm ready to go to Dracula's castle immediately. I remember that password by heart. I wrote it down first, but then I used it so much to go back and play to that, that area of the game that I remembered it by heart or in my mind. I remembered it by heart. And so I would just put in the password without having to look at what I wrote down and put the password in. That's how much I played that game. That's how much I used that password. And my friends would watch me do that. Put in the password without looking what I wrote down. And they're like, you remember this by heart? You remember the password by heart? I go, yeah. And they, their minds were blown. And back then I was like, eh, you know, I use it a lot. So that's how I remember it. Now I look back on it. I'm like, yeah, that really was impressive. Who remembers a password? It's like a Metroid password or Roger Rabbit password or whatever. Who's going to remember that in their head? You have to write that down. Well, if you use it enough times, you're gonna, it's muscle memory, you're going to remember it eventually. That's how much I played that game back then, Simon's Quest. And 
Yeah, I told my dad, surprise me with the game. Just pick a game at random. Don't tell me what you're going to pick. Just surprise me with the game. And he did. He did not know anything about Castlevania. He looked at the cover box, I assume, and said, hey, okay, uh, this game looks cool. I'm going to pick that. And he did. So, I, 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 you can't always judge a game by its cover. I mean, look at Deadly Towers. Uh, I hated that game. And some other game. Uh, you, you could you could be deceived by the cover, but some. Luckily, I'm glad my dad did not pick Deadly Towers or some other game that has a great cover, but the game is terrible. Um, I, I'm glad he didn't uh, do that because I'm thankfully, thank God, he picked Simon's Quest. Thank God. And yeah, so Simon's Quest was the NES fans game of the week last week. It was a fun week on the page. And I did my playthrough of it to promote the NES fans page. If you have not checked out NES fans, check them out on Facebook. If I remember, I'll put the link in the description box, which I usually do remember. Sometimes I forget to put certain links in there. But yeah, the NES fans game of the week, Simon's Quest. A game that will never get old to me. I will always go back, do a video of, or, or a live stream of. And yeah, so, and the soundtrack. I mean, the game as, I mean, you can say thanks to AVGN, the game is kind of infamous. It's not good. It does have a good reputation. But the soundtrack, even if you don't like the game, I mean, you know, there's some games I don't like. But the soundtrack's good. I'm not a big fan of Not Me on Elm Street for NES, but that music is awesome. I like, I like Double Dragon 3, but it gets a lot of flack. But that soundtrack is awesome. Simon's Quest. Some people don't like it, but that soundtrack. Bloody Tears, Monster Dance, Dwelling of Doom. Um, Dwelling of, Dwelling of Doom is okay. It's not one of the best tracks in the game, but there's not really a bad like a track oh, I can't stand or hate in the game at all. I forgot what the final track was called where you're in the ruins of Dracula's castle. That one's good. Uh, the Requiem in the end, the ending music is pretty good. I mean, uh, Password music. It's pretty good stuff. It really is. And yeah, so Simon's Quest. Uh, I, have, I still haven't played every single Castlevania game to this day, but... No matter what, Simon's Quest is going to be my overall favorite. It just is. I mean, it's from my childhood. And they introduced me to Castlevania. And it's just still my favorite to this day. And I played a lot of great Castlevania games. 1 and 3. Bloodlines. Both Castlevania 64s. That's a, that was, those are two other Castlevania games that get a lot of criticism. I can understand why a little bit. The camera angles, especially in the first one, were not good. Not good at all. Uh, very, uh, the, oh, the, I don't know. What's it? camera the, the the camera angles controls together that kind of frustrates people and i get that i do but i loved castlevania 64 and legacy of darkness i thought they were well done games the musical score the atmosphere i thought was great so i love those games as well i played a little bit of castlevania 4 but not enough to, to submerge myself into it i did a first impression review back in 2010 it seems like a, a real awesome game I still have not played Symphony of the Night. As shocking as it is, I need to play that game at some point. I really do and really want to check it out. Uh, I've been hearing this Metroidvania. I've seen a lot of footage. I do want to check it out. Um, what else is there? Uh, one of the Castlevania games have I played? I'm trying to think of any more I've actually played other than those, but the ones that really stand out to me personally is Simon's Quest, Bloodlines, and the first Castlevania 64. Legacy of Darkness is great, but I play a lot more of uh, the original Castlevania 64, the first Castlevania 64 than I have Legacy of Darkness. Legacy of Darkness is cool. You get to transform into a wolf. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, there are a lot of cool elements about Legacy of Darkness. Uh, and that the intro music to Castlevania 64, the, the, the yeah, the intro music's epic. But this game, this game, this video is about Simon's Quest. Uh, I don't know much else, to, what else to say. Except uh, my friend Darkmoon75 on YouTube showed me a trick that I never knew about until a few years ago. And I thought I knew everything about Simon's Quest by now. 
I'm still not the best Simon's Quest player. I still get lost sometimes. People like Zombie GLT1. Those people, him and uh, other people, they're much better. Mazen Power, he beat the game without dying. I've never beaten Simon's Quest, no death. Never. I might attempt to do that one day. I've never beaten Simon's Quest without dying. Um, however, those two are real much better at Simon's Quest than I am. But there's one trick I never learned until Dark Moon showed me on YouTube. There's a dead end section of the game where every, you're in this green cave or whatever it is. like It's like a greenish cave. And there's a dead end. You got to go back through the poison marsh. So if you don't have laurels, well, you're screwed. But there's invisible stairs. There's invisible stairs that you can climb to avoid the poison marsh. I never knew that. And I think Darkman was saying that it was probably something that the programmers forgot to put in the game. Or they did put it, but they didn't put, put it as visible. I don't know. Or maybe, now, now that I think of it, no, because, uh, well, you don't have the white crystal anymore by that point, I don't think. Well, you might, you might since it's, you know, I think in the beginning of the game, you can go straight to there with the white crystal. You can go straight to the dead end. So maybe the white crystal will show it. I don't know. I never tried that. Maybe that's why. You need the white crystal to tell you this is a dead end. You need to go back. Here are the stairs. Because by that time I discovered it, or I even think when Dark Moon demonstrated it, he didn't have the white crystal anymore. He had like the red crystal or whatever. So maybe the white crystal will reveal that. I did not know that for years. I thought it was a dead end. And if you didn't have laurels, you're going to have to go through the poison marsh. And if you die, you die. You get game over, you get game over. Oh, well, that's your penalty. So... At least it wasn't as cruel of a, a dead end as Dirty Harry, the, the dead end room. That was messed up. But anyway, that's it. That's all I got to say about Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest and my history behind it. And, you know, rest in peace, Dad. Uh, thanks to him for buying me that game. Or I would have never had the great memories of Simon's Quest that I have today. So y'all can thank my dad for uh, me loving that game so much and playing it a lot for you guys on youtube over the years so all right that is it i am out of here have a good one i'm ron moore god bless take care